السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته Good morning ladies and gentlemen it's my great pleasure to be here with you today um, and uh, first I would like to welcome elites and the first uh, uh, World Education Summit here in Dubai and inshallah this will be a very huge success congratulating you for the work you've done so far to this point let me to start today by giving sharing with you a small story in a recent visit I have for a school where the kids were learning about the wildlife in Africa and they were watching the famous Lion King quite sure that most of you know what Lion King movie looks like right yeah. well if you don't it's a, it's, a, it's a Disney cartoon animation about Africa and showing how the jungle animals are mean the main character but anyway as they watching that a kid a small kid asked a very interesting question she said why does the lion talk because she said lions usually don't talk and another one asked another question why does the market sings because usually they don't song they don't sing I find this very interesting because I don't know how many of you have heard that question before. At least I didn't hear a kid asking why, why the animal do talk. But if you have young children and watching enough kids' movies, sometimes we take it to granted that animals and household objects can converse with each other and break out those conversations to songs. So this was an interesting question for me to think about for some time. And I will get to why that's interesting toward the end. In a recent uh, publication by the World Economic Forum in Davos last month, they came with this new report called The Future of Jobs. And it said by the year 2020, just a few years from now, regular feature of our daily lives would be self-driving cars computers we have conversation with, like the Lion Kings, and devices that communicate with each other. So your fridge will communicate with your phone, and when you are nearby a supermarket, it will remind you to stop and pick up some more milk to bring home. Advanced robotics, AI, and machine learning, it's a stuff not too far away from now. In fact, a lot of decision-making, analytical thinking skill that we are learning to develop at school will be done by machines for us. This opens up a new opportunity in the job market. In fact, and this is the most interesting part of the report that says 65%, 65% of children who are going to primary schools today will end up working in jobs that they don't exist yet, 65%. 65 kids out of every 100 will be working in jobs that we actually have no idea about those jobs. This report identify top skills that school students today will need to be working on. And the top three are problem solving, critical thinking, and last but most importantly, creativity. In an age where we have computers and machines to manage almost all our aspects of life, it seems to me that the skills we need the most in the future are those who connect with us. Connect with us and connect us closely to the experience of simply being who we are, and that is just being human being. And that's why I remember this girl's question and why she asked about the animals who are talking and singing in the movie. Because when they talk or they sing or they dance, they are showing human-like qualities that we can connect with, feel empathy, and most importantly, make us happy and very happy. When we are happy, we approach our lives from a very positive place. 
and we are able to see complex problem more clearly. We have a clearer perspective and we are able to ask question that does really matter to us. And of course, our minds are often open to creativity and to innovations. So when we are talking about education, what are we really talking about is kids and enabling kids to be happier. We care about attainment and numbers, yes, but we also care about the characters and the well-being of those kids. In fact, and this is an interesting number, in our recent survey that shows 85% of children in Dubai are happy. This is averaging of all different curriculums, being British, American, and Indian. So we're really starting from a very good ground, a very positive ground, to have an 85% that is crossing over 200 different nationalities. We know that happy kids learn better and retain information longer. They are also more creative and they take more risk and able to solve complex problem more effectively. We have seen many wonderful examples of schools in Dubai that integrate well-being and positive practices into their curriculum. And just to cite that there are 45 schools out of the 170 schools in Dubai are actively having urban gardening programs in their schools. Students are responsible for taking care of the soil, the plants, and then getting to eat their own vegetable afterward. Think of how many of these kids <coughs> are learning about not only gardening, but they are learning about science, learning about math, and learning about healthy eating. And I have a friend of mine who started a project in Singapore called GUI, Ground Up Initiative. He has this theory relationship between the ground and us as a people. And his theory goes the following, is the relationship between mankind and the ground should not be broken at any point of time. If it does, it leads you to your happiness. And this is in Singapore, because we all live in high-rise building, drive four by fours, and wear some of us high heels. <laughs> Kids don't know that. Their hands are in the ground, and they're growing their own vegetable, and that makes them very happy. This is something we really want to learn more about. And in fact, today is a very happy day, being here with all you good folks. But in the same time, today we have launched a new survey for students in Dubai. Happy survey. The team calls it School of the Hearts survey. We want to know exactly what schools are doing right to make their students happier. We want to know what they are doing right to make their students happier, and then we want to know how to make more of it to all those schools. So please encourage all your schools to be active in this. It's not an index or anything, it's just a survey, it's a volunteer survey, and we put it out there, there are questions, and we want to see what are the good school look like in Dubai, what are the happiest school, and those schools who have the big hearts, not attainment, not scores, but how do, they feel, how do the kids feel about it? To push well-being in a school is not just coming from a research and, educator, and educators. We have seen an increased number of parents who are telling us, and they are really looking for schools that they care about every part of their child development. Academic, yes, but emotionally also. We see a need for more boutique schools, we see a need for more niche school. We see a need for more beacon schools. Schools that do things differently, who bring out the nature of creativity and problem solving in every child. And for those who are involved in education, it's always good to actually look up the word education from where it started in the Latin. And I've done that very recently just to know how far we came from the original purpose of education. Education in Latin means educarte. If you look up at the dictionary, it will say something like, to bring out from within. To bring out from within. 
school who does things differently will bring out those new skills. So that when we have 65% of jobs that don't exist yet start opening, our kids will have learned from the Lion King. They will have learned from the Lion King, which has the famous saying, problem-free philosophy, hakuna matata. I thank you for giving me this opportunity and I wish all the best of luck. Thank you.